Hey YouTube, it's Jay, and today we're going to continue our Breaking Good series. Now today's break is going to be an eight ball break. It's one that's been around for a while. Um, now I will tell you that I am personally not a fan of eight ball. Um, I played eight ball when I was first playing. Then I found nine ball and straight pool and I never looked back. Um, and I don't think I have played an eight ball tournament in 25 years. Um, so, of course, 20 years is the last, you know, how long it's been since I played any tournament other than the one I played a couple weeks ago that I didn't do very well at. Uh, anyhow, so eight ball. Um, I only have a few breaks that I use. I'm going to show you those breaks. Um, I'm going to show them to you both with a template and without a template. Uh, I have not seen anybody using templates in eight ball. Uh, so when I do my 10 breaks to look at the percentages, um, when I do those 10 breaks, I'm going to focus on, I'm going to focus on the wooden rack. We're going to use wooden rack for all those breaks. The template, breaking it with the template is just to show you how it works. Now I've racked the balls for eight ball in color order. So I've got the, the yellow balls on the top and the bottom of the rack, the one and the nine. Uh, the 2 and 10, the 3 and the 11, the 4 and 12, the 5 and 13, the 6 and 14, and the 7 and 15. So we can see where they end up on the table. Now I'm going to leave it to you to, uh, to take a look at where they all end up. With this break, the reason I like this break, and this is my primary break for 8 ball, and, and has been for a very long time. Um, the reason I use this break is because you get a nice spread on the table. You're not going to have clumped up balls. Uh, it is a little bit of a gambler's break. And what I mean by that is it's kind of a slam break. So what the deal is, is you're going to end up with a wide open table and hopefully you hit hard enough that something goes in because if it does, uh, you should be able to run out either color. Um, so typically when you break this, uh, so when you break this, let me zoom the camera in a little bit. So when you break this, it's very similar to the nine ball center table break, except that the nine ball break, we went half a ball from the middle. With this, we're going to go a full ball from the middle. So it's a little bit further out, but not much. Um, we're still going to hit it with one tip of top English, and we are going to be driving the cue down through this, through that top of the cue into the table and you should see that flex. If you don't see that flex, you didn't do it right. Okay, now the idea is you're going to aim, your starting aim point is the top of the knot. Okay, what that does is that drives the, the nine balls on this side in to, to that general direction. Now some of them will come around and over up, up here, but that's fine. Um, typically, if you're going to make a ball here, the two ball is going to go in the side, um, or if you're breaking from the other side of the spot, the 10 ball goes in this side. The corners tend to go around the table for rails and might go in, usually not. Um, the, the most balls I've broken using this break was four. Um, and I have not made a, an eight ball break from this position. This is not about making the eight ball. This break is about spreading the balls out, making one, and being able to run out. So let's go ahead and look at how it works on, on a template rack. There's that two in the side. You can see the balls are all spread out. There's no, uh, I mean, there's a little bit of work that has to be done in this area, but other than that, it's wide open. Um, if I was shooting this, I could shoot the seven in that corner. I uh, come, come down for the five in the side, and then I have no problems on solids. If I just like the stripes better, which I kind of do here, um, I could shoot the 12 in the side to establish a center table position, which, or, or just to come up here and try to put the 11 in the side and get rid of it. Um, I do think I would take stripes in this case. Uh, but anyhow, um, you can see 
They spread out very nicely. The cue stays roughly in the center of the table. I hit it a little off to the left. If I hit, so I would adjust my aim just a little bit to the right from there. What we want is we wanted that cue ball to sit out here and, and basically park itself so that we had a complete choice of pretty much anything on the table. Uh, so that is the template version of this spray. Now let's do it with a wooden rack. All right, so here it is with a wooden rack. And looking at this, the top's frozen. There's a little tiny gap between the 10 and the 11. This is actually pretty frozen. Um, there's a little tiny gap between the 13 and the 5. I might be able to push those in. Yeah, they're not sitting. That's okay. Um, as always, when you do find gaps in a rack, you want to break from the opposite side. So I want to break from over here on this break. Okay, did not make anything, but you can see they're all nice and spread out. There's no real problem balls on the table for either color. That's what you're trying to get. Like I said, this is a gambler's break. And what I mean by a gambler's break is you break them hard. If something goes in, you should be able to run out. Uh, if nothing goes in, your opponent's going to run out on you. Uh, it tends to put them in slightly more than it doesn't. So uh, if you have, say, a 50% uh, sink rate where you're making a ball, or 60% sink rate, then with this rack you should win 60% of the games because you should have a run out every time. That's why I like this one. Um, it, it is not as consistent as, say, a cut break with a template, um, but uh, it also has the advantage. What are you doing? Right here. The fly in here. Uh, it is not as consistent as a cut break, but it does have the advantage that it spreads the balls out much more than a cut break does. A cut break tends to have little clusters you have to deal with. This will give you a wide open rack to shoot at. So that's the break. Let's do our, our let's do our ten breaks and see how we see how we come out. Oh, uh, criteria for this: uh, we're going to count a good break, if we break and make a ball, we're going to count a bad break if we miss, if we don't make a ball. And that's the entire criteria for this one, because that's what it all hinges on. If you make a ball, you win. If you miss, if nothing goes in, you lose. So let's, let's give it a shot. Again, you can see how spread out they are. It's just a nice, nice break for spreading them out. If I hit it just a bit harder, that 13 problem would have been.
got one ball. So that's your eight ball break of the day. Uh, that's break number one for eight ball. Okay. Unless it's not working, that's the one that I use almost exclusively. Uh, with that, I'm gonna let you go. Don't forget, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, ding the notification bell, and we'll see you next time.